Well, I don't see any hawks, but this is probably the tree Red was talking about. At least it was the tree. That sounded like a hawk. Hey, what is that hawk standing on? Oh, that looks like a speaker. Huh? I better get out of here. <gasps> My arms and legs are tied. I can't move. At least I can kick. If I could just get that scythe down, I could use the blade to cut the rope around my wrists and free my hands. this thing burn up. I've got to put it out. What in blazes happened? I saw the fire from my platform and came running. You weren't in there playing with matches, were you? I was looking at birds, and then I noticed something on the house, and the next thing I knew I was locked in the tool shed and somebody was setting it on fire. Whoa, you're not making much sense. Probably smoke inhalation or something. Come talk to me after you've cleaned yourself up and gotten some sleep. I need to tell you something. Somebody tried to kill you? I didn't say that. Somebody knocked you out, locked you in a shed, set it on fire, and you think they were, what, just pulling a prank? Wake up and smell the hostile vibes, Nancy. I guess it's just hard for me to believe that anybody would consider me to be that big a threat. I should have never let you stay there by yourself. Sally, I'm fine. I feel bad about your tool shed, though. Who cares about the shed? It was full of junk anyway. I'm glad to be rid of it. That's kind of the way Ranger Akers saw it, too. He showed up right after the birdwatcher did and ticketed me for burning refuse in a manner that endangered park property. Ah, uh, that man is insufferable. Emily was nice, though. She came by right afterwards and wouldn't leave until I drank the tea she made for me. Look, Nancy, one more time. If you want to leave, just say the word and I'll come get you. Sally, one more time. I'm fine. Well, then promise me you'll be careful, okay? I promise. I'll be in touch. You better. Nancy, how's it going? This caller ID stuff is going to take some getting used to. I'm here too, Nan. What's going on? Did I mention that all the water in Sally's house comes from a well? Ew, really? Does it taste like rotten eggs? Not all well water tastes like rotten eggs, Bess. I don't know if it does or not. Because the well is so old, I need to get the water tested before I drink it. Good plan. Nothing will wreck your day faster than a nice tall glass of contaminated water. Moon Lake is gorgeous, but it's so remote. The park ranger is the closest thing they have to a sheriff around here. Park ranger? What's he like? Which, as we all know, is Bess's way of saying, Park ranger? Is he cute? Not true, George. Nancy thinks everybody's cute, so what would be the point? Anyway, Nancy, you were saying? His name's Jeff Akers. He's very helpful, polite, efficient, knowledgeable. Sounds boring. In fact, he probably knows more about the area than all the other residents of Moon Lake combined. Sounds very boring. What's he know about these alleged ghost dogs? He thinks they're just plain old dogs that for some reason like to run around at night scaring people. And what does Detective Drew think about the dogs? I think Sally had good reason to be scared of them. I don't blame her for leaving, which leads me to think that maybe that was the whole idea. Somebody had those dogs attack Sally in order to scare her away? Why would anybody do that? She was there for less than a month. You'd have to be a total creep to make enemies that fast. And Sally's one of the nicest people I know. Ooh, Nancy! Speaking of cute guys, Frank and Joe Hardy called. I filled them in on where you are and what you're doing, and they're dying to hear from you. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what are they up to? Compared to you, nothing. As I was telling them about this latest case of yours, I could hear them turning green with envy right through the receiver. 
Their number is 280-555-4865. Bess didn't recognize it when they called and almost didn't answer the phone. Good thing my cousin here has a memory like an elephant, huh? What's that supposed to mean? Call them, Nancy. They're dying to hear from you. But remember, Frank's cute and all that, but George and I want to hear from you, too. Yeah, no fair discussing the case with them from now on and not with us. Promise you'll keep us up to speed? <laughs> I promise. This bird watcher I met has got me taking pictures of birds for some survey he's doing. He's a bit of a grump. Does he live nearby? No, he just kind of hangs out in the woods. In fact, I only see him at night. Interesting. He's in the woods at night. The dogs are in the woods at night. Could he have had a reason for wanting Sally out of the Malone house? Maybe. From what Ranger Acres told me, Red would like everybody around here out of their houses. He thinks there's too many people at Moon Lake and it's ruining the bird watching. Ranger Acres called him a fanatic. Fanatic equals suspect in my book. Get this. It turns out that Jeff Acres will be one happy park ranger if Sally sells her Moon Lake property back to the bank and they wind up selling it to the Parks Department. You think he might be responsible for all this ghost dog stuff? He has a motive and he has a dog, although it doesn't look at all like the dogs that have been scaring Sally. But it shows he knows something about dogs. Better pull out your suspect list and pencil him in, Nan. I still say you guys should lighten up on him. Bye, you guys. Don't be a stranger. Take care. you holding up? Guess I'll see you later. I guess you will. Hello again, Miss Drew. Am I in for another interrogation? I'd like to mail this photo to the woman in Las Vegas. Can you do that for me? As always, I'm here to serve, Miss Drew. Just give it to me and I'll take care of it. I'm sure she'll be very pleased to get this back. Sorry to bother you again, but did those results from the water test come in yet? There's something here for you from the State Department of Health. Oh my gosh, not only is the water bad, but it seems like the well may have been contaminated deliberately. I wouldn't go jumping to conclusions without proof, Ms. Drew. I'm sure there's a far less melodramatic explanation. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. Hey, Joe. It's Nancy. Nancy? How's it going? Uh, no, wait. Don't answer that. Talk about the weather or something. The weather? Yeah. That'll give me time to grab the other phone and take it outside. Frank's washing the car. He'll kill me if he misses anything. Uh, here, wait a sec. Take a break. It's Nancy. Hang on. He's putting the hose down. He's drying his hands. He's walking over. Nancy, hi. What's up? Bess and George say you've got another mystery on your hands. Or should we say, on your paws. They told you about the dogs? We made them tell us everything. Pumped them dry. As you may have guessed, we're not exactly rolling in detective work here. So you're living vicariously through me. It's not the first time, sad to say. What conclusions have you reached so far, detective? If nothing else, those ghost dogs are very well trained. I'm watching to see who owns and or trains dogs around here. Good plan. But don't forget, a really smart perpetrator is going to make it look like he or she has no connection to dogs whatsoever. But then a really, really smart perp might have dogs all over the place and not bother to hide it, because he or she would figure you'd never suspect anyone so obvious. That bird watcher doesn't have a dog. And when I met him for the first time, he seemed awfully eager to make sure I knew the story about Malone and his dogs. Sounds like a suspect to me. Bess said something about a good-looking park ranger? Ranger Acres has a motive and a dog. 
and a uniform, which is why Bess assumes he's good-looking. I'm sure my brother here would say a uniform automatically makes somebody more suspicious, because most people assume that a uniform makes the wearer less suspicious. Right, Joe? Right. Of course, then again, your really, really smart perp is going to Joe. We get the picture. I'm convinced that someone is using those ghost dogs to scare Sally into abandoning Malone's house. If I can just figure out why, I might be able to figure out who. Never hurts to look for motive. Malone and his four dogs are supposedly buried in a little cemetery near the house. They've all got headstones inscribed with when they were born and when they died. That's interesting. Did Malone have family? Not that I'm aware of. Then who had the tombstones inscribed? That's exactly what I was wondering. Sounds like this latest puzzle of yours is still missing a few pieces. I managed to get in touch with someone who used to be Malone's girlfriend. She says there's a speakeasy beneath Sally's house. But you haven't been in it yet? No, Vivian, that's her name. She's going to send me her key. I'm not even going to tell you what the key unlocks. So you could literally be sitting on top of a speakeasy? Cool. How do you think your suspects would feel if that turns out to be the case? Emily Griffin would no doubt be thrilled at the chance to collect artifacts on dry land for once. But it would be easier to collect them if no one else knew about the speakeasy. So if she somehow knows about it and figures you and Sally don't... She'd have a motive for trying to scare us off the property. In other words, you're right back where you started. Maybe Emily has a motive, maybe she doesn't. Anything else my genius brother and I can help you with, Nancy? Later, guys. Watch out for dogs. Just watch out, period. Hello there. I owe you an apology. After you came up here looking for those red tails, I gave my map a closer look and realized it was more than 50 years old. Reason you can't find them is probably because their favorite nesting tree is gone. Finding that hawk's gonna be harder than I thought, so why don't you just give me back my camera and I'll take it from here. It didn't get burned up in that fire or anything, did it? You'll be happy to know that I did get a picture of a red-tailed hawk. So here's your camera back. I got all the birds. Thank you, Nancy. Nice work. You're a credit to your generation. I never noticed those gas cans before. I ran out of gas. So much for being prepared, huh? Well, that's all I wanted to tell you. I'm sure you've got places to go, things to see, people to pester. See you in a while. No hurry. It could be mice making that sound. It looks like a tiny hole. It's blocked. It's blocked. It looks like a tiny hole. What's the combination? I bet those were deer mice. Speakeasy. Joe Akers? Emily said Jeff Akers' father was named Joe. Maybe Jeff is related to William Akers after all.
The dogs will lead the way. I wonder what that means. Yes, it's Nancy. I know that. What's going on? I found the coolest old newspaper. It's from 1927, and on the front page is an article about Mickey Malone and a man named William Akers. Akers? Any relation to park ranger Jeff Akers? When I asked, Jeff Akers said that it was just a huge unfortunate coincidence. According to the paper, William Akers was Mickey Malone's most trusted employee, his number one go-to guy. Where'd you find it? You know how I always seem to wind up in houses with secret passageways? Sometimes I think they follow you around. Well, I found these hidden stairs leading from the living room into the cellar. What's down there? That's what's weird. The stairs led down into this empty space. There's some kind of safe in the wall and a set of stairs leading to a door that goes outside, but that was it. Hmm. Why would Malone bother hiding a staircase if it didn't go somewhere important? Hey, newsflash. I think I know why somebody wants to scare Sally off her property, and it has nothing to do with birds, parks, or artifacts. So what does it have to do with? Gold, as in 600 pounds of gold bullion. That's a good motive. Come on, Nancy, tell us everything. Gold is one of my favorite subjects. Well, I found William Akers' journal. Journal? Yeah, right. Go on. Have you ever heard of the Hole in the Floor gold heist? I've heard of the Hole in the Wall gang. Well, according to Acres Journal, in 1931, somebody stole a shipment of gold bars in broad daylight by dropping them through a hole in the floor of a moving train. Let me guess. The thieves were never caught, and the gold was never found. You got it. According to Acres, Malone masterminded the whole thing, and he hid the gold right here on his Moon Lake property. You think it's still there? It must be. Like you said, Nancy, that would explain why somebody wants Sally, and now you, out of there so bad. I also found a map with the inscription, The Dogs Will Lead the Way. You found a treasure map? My gosh, Nancy. Secret passageways, buried treasure? You're like a magnet for that stuff. The dogs will lead the way to what? According to the journal, Malone left Akers the map and said it would show him where the gold was, but all it has on it is that inscription and some landmarks. What kind of landmarks? The house, the shoreline, some rocks in the lake, the pump, the cemetery, and it's crisscrossed with lines like a grid. A grid? Sounds like precise locations are involved. I think somebody may have deliberately put poison down Sally's well. Yikes! What makes you think that? The Department of Health found unusually high levels of arsenic in the water sample I sent them. Somebody's trying to poison you with arsenic? They said that? It's apparently not unusual to find some arsenic in well water. So somebody could be trying to poison you. But you don't know for sure. Right. And they may not be trying to poison anybody. They may want to contaminate the well just enough to force Sally to either go to the expense of digging a new one or forget the whole thing and leave. And because arsenic is found naturally in well water anyway, you may never know for sure. Bummer. Bye, you guys. Ta-ta. Ciao for now. package just arrived for you from Las Vegas. Great! Vivian sent me the key! I'll dispose of the package. Wouldn't want to break any littering laws, would we? What do you know about a man named Joe Akers? Why do you ask? I recently found out that William Akers had a son. All right, all right. William Akers was my grandfather. And you don't want anyone to know that. It's not exactly something I'm proud of. My father spent his whole life trying to make people forget what my grandfather was, and trying to make sure people who didn't know what he was never found out. I've been doing the same thing. 
What did William Akers do after Malone was arrested? I'm afraid you're going to have to excuse me, Miss Drew. In case you've forgotten, I'm a very busy man. I apologize for my previous behavior. As a park ranger, I strive to keep my personal feelings in check at all times, and that time I failed. It's my duty as a public servant to try to make it up to you. What would you like to know? What can you tell me about the gold that Malone supposedly buried on his property? As far as I know, it doesn't exist. It's just one of those rumors people want to believe, so they do. Thanks for all your help. That's why I'm here. It's too dark. I need a flashlight. Oh, the batteries are going dead. I can't see a thing. I'd better go back. How you holding up? Do you know anything about the gold that Mickey Malone supposedly buried somewhere on his property? All I got to say about it is, if there really was a bunch of gold buried somewhere and nobody ever found it, it's for darn sure nobody ever will. Not with them dogs up there. I need flashlight batteries. Do you carry them? Yep. But you know, I've been meaning to make a pretty display out of them packs of combo coal over there for the longest time just can't seem to get around to it. I could probably do that. Here's the way it should look when you're done.
Obviously never tried combo cola.